All right, the MacBook Air with a 15 inch display was just announced, and I think it's a very important product to talk about. You see, it plugs a massive hole in Apple's lineup. Finally, we have a large screen Mac laptop for those who don't need a lot of performance, people who are just using their laptop for web browsing, office work, and that sort of thing. Since it's basically a MacBook Air M2, the 13 inch with a larger screen and a bigger battery, I feel pretty confident in sharing my early stage thoughts on it. And FYI, I'm trying to get this video out fast to you, so apologies if production value is less than on our normal videos. And by the way, Apple also announced an augmented reality headset known as the Vision Pro. Rather than jam my thoughts on that into this video, I'm going to make a dedicated one on that later, so make sure you're subscribed with the notification bell on so you don't miss it. Back to the MacBook Air 15. Let me share a personal story with you. I mention my mother in almost every video. Well, I wanted to get her a new laptop. She just needs something for casual use, responding to emails, watching Netflix, and writing office documents. She really wants a large screen, as her eyesight just isn't the best these days. And sometimes she needs a bit of support. And since I live in the USA, and she's in Australia, I can't provide that. So I wanted to buy her a laptop, where if she does need support, there is excellent support available. No laptop brand offers the level of support that Apple does. You can take the laptop into any store worldwide for help and even purchase Apple's excellent extended warranty. So I knew I wanted to get her a Mac. But the issue was the only large screen Mac available was a MacBook Pro 16. That laptop was heavy for her and it's too expensive as it has performance that she just doesn't need. If this MacBook Air 15 was available, it would have been perfect for her and what I would have bought. So. Let's now go beyond Apple's hype, annoying amounts of hype to be honest, and talk about what we really have here. The MacBook Air 15 has the same 8-core CPU and 10-core GPU as the MacBook Air 13 with M2, the upper end config that is. Based on the 35 watt charger being the same as the MacBook Air 13's, my gut is there will be no increase in power delivery to the processor. So we should have the same performance as the MacBook Air 13 with M2. In Geekbench, which tests a variety of common performance tasks, it's around the same as the Intel 1360p processor in single core and a bit worse in multi core. And in Cinebench, which tests the processor's performance when maxed out, it's worse in both single and multi core. In fact, it's actually worse than Intel's low wattage 13th gen U series processors. Its poor performance in Cinebench, by the way, is affected by it being a fanless laptop. A fanless laptop does have benefits, in that the laptop is of course silent, but it also has negatives. When running anything that requires performance for any duration of time, the performance of the processor will start to drop, as the only way to keep it from overheating is to reduce the power fed to it. Secondly, the laptop's metal chassis will gradually become warmer to the touch. The laptop itself becomes one giant heatsink, spreading the heat around to dissipate it. By the way, due to the MacBook Air 15's larger size, I don't think it will get as warm when running performance tasks as the 13. And even though Apple's M2 chips do have excellent integrated graphics and you can do video editing on it, I do not think people looking for performance should really buy this laptop. They should continue to purchase the MacBook Pro 14 or 16 which have more robust cooling solutions and more powerful components. Next, one of the good things about a larger laptop is you can fit a bigger battery in it. The MacBook Air 15 now has a larger 67 watt hour battery compared to the 53 watt hour of the 13 inch. But remember, the MacBook Air 15 has to power a larger display. That being said, the MacBook Air 13 with M2 already has incredible battery life. During my battery life test where I lowered the screen's brightness to 200 nits, then ran a Netflix video on repeat over Wi-Fi for 4 hours, I recorded 68% battery remaining, so around 12 hours of battery life for that use case. The MacBook Air 15, which my gut tells me will exceed that, it should be excellent. When it comes to weight, we are looking at 3.3 pounds, which I think is excellent for a 15.3 inch screen size. Very light and portable, and it will be a joy to carry around compared to other large screen laptops. In comparison, Dell's premium XPS 15 weighs in at a much heavier 4.2 pounds. Compared to smaller screen 14 inch laptops, the ThinkPad X1 Carbon is 2.5 pounds, the Yoga 9i is 3.1, and Apple's own MacBook Pro 14 is 3.5. So compared to the MacBook Pro 14, you are losing performance, but gaining on screen space and portability. You no doubt once again have Apple's excellent speakers and their fantastic webcam, but the notch in the display is still massive. There are no additional ports, and all the charging capable ports are on the left side, so you will have to run a cable around the back if your power outlet is on the right side. This can get in your way. 
Lastly, you still have Wi-Fi 6 and not 6E, or even the newer Wi-Fi 7. Pricing on the Surface seems good. It starts at $1,300 for the base model, but beware though, this is for a very low-end configuration with 8GB of RAM and a 256GB SSD. Also, Apple's 256GB SSDs are notorious for being slower than their 512GB drives. It wouldn't surprise me if this issue carries across to the new MacBook Air 15. If you spec it up to 16 gig of RAM and a more relevant 512 gig SSD, you are already at 1,700 US dollars. So this laptop is only well priced for users who have very basic needs, which ties into my prediction for the MacBook Air 15. For users who want a large screen device and do not require performance, this laptop is great and very competitively priced for what you get. I think it will be an excellent choice for people just logging onto their work computer from home, browsing the internet, working on office documents, or studying something that doesn't require a high performance laptop. I think it'll be the best all round device out there for you at that price range. But it doesn't mean it eradicates Windows laptops from existence as Apple would have you think. You can purchase Lenovo's excellent Yoga 9i on a regular sale for $1,150. That laptop has a touchscreen, is a two-in-one, performs better for CPU tasks, it feels cooler to the touch while using it, and it comes with more memory and storage. The MacBook Air 15, on the other hand, performs better for GPU tasks, has a larger screen, a better trackpad, much better battery life, no fan noise, better speakers, and a better webcam. Oh, and I do like that they have lowered the price on the entry model MacBook Air 13 with M2 by $100. That laptop is a great buy for the same type of user who should buy the 15, but who want more portability or who just don't need a larger screen. Props to Apple for that as it's rare for a company to drop the price of anything in today's day and age. For those looking to run performance applications on a Mac, you should continue to purchase the MacBook Pro 14 or 16 as I said. Well, those are my quick early stage thoughts on the new MacBook Air 15. I hope it helps you decide whether you should order one or get something else instead. I did order one myself, so I will do an updated video when it arrives. I'm interested to know if you think early prediction videos like this one are helpful. If you did, let me know with a comment below. Anyway, make sure to get subscribed and smash that like button. Not only does it show your appreciation for the effort gone into making these videos, but as I always say, it makes my mother very proud. Till next time, go do something awesome with your day and I will catch you later.